Now I'm going to get into some real world use cases. What, what are customers actually asking us for? What are they actually um, doing with this type of technology? I spend a lot of time with media, um, media and entertainment, um, because the media and entertainment guys have high bandwidth, um, high performance, low latency types of needs. Um, they talk about things in the media and entertainment world um, based on workflows. And so if you look at the way that they do business, um, the best way to think about it is like an assembly line, like the old assembly lines within an auto manufacturer, where you have um, different people that are touching the car to do different type of things as it gets to the end of the production line. Same type of world in media. Things are coming in from the, the broadcast side, so the, from the production side, it's coming in, it's being ingested, which means it's being digitized, and then it's being put onto their storage. Whatever that storage may be, some of them use fiber channels, some of them use infinity bands, some, they use all different types of storage within their network. The key is, though, with them is, once it's put on the storage, then they have many, many different people that are gonna touch the, um, that content so that they can do their job. And their job may be digital rights man management, they may be rendering, they may be reformatting the content, but they're gonna do all types of things. So you'll see a lot of, not a lot of connections actually, a smaller number of connections that are very persistent and that are requiring a lot of bandwidth. So they're pulling very large files over to their workstations. In fact, I'm working with a, a, um, a customer right now that's going to 40 gig. 40 gig in the workstations to connect to their, they're building out their own storage solution. They're not buying it from somebody. They're building out their own. And in their world, they want to be able to get to that content as quickly as possible because they've been, they're being asked to do things um, quicker now. To get things like, if you think about the Olympics, the Olympics, was broadcast on the internet um, almost near real time. And so you need to manipulate that content very quickly if you're gonna be able to allow it to get to these type of devices out there. And they're being asked, they said, for a lot of different events to do that, whether it be news or sports or whatever to do that. So they have to get closer and closer to the broadcast uh, facilities. So they need a high performance, reliable network. The first thing they told me when I started talking to them is there's no such thing as a black screen in their business. So the screen can't go blank. So the network has to be reliable. They, they like a lot of redundancy um, built into the network. They like the fact that if there's a link outage, that the network automatically um, fails to the other links. Or if there's a device outage, <laughs> the network automatically reroutes around that device very quickly. That's key to them. And then they want to do it. They actually said to me when I first started, you know, the discussion starts at 100 gig. But, um, but they want to get to that. They're going to start with a, a lot of ISLs together. Um, they want to move to 100 gig. They want to hear things like 400 gig, <laughs> Ethernet, um, in stories and roadmaps. And so VCS gives them that type of scalability that they're looking for on the post-production side. Um, so it's the right type of network for that. Um, any questions? Any questions about that network? They believe in us because they, they know we can build, do it on the, <laughs> the fiber channel side. In fact, my, one of my favorite stories is I came into an opportunity and the, the guy goes, oh, we love your fiber channel products. They're great. They're wonderful. We've been using them for many years. And I said, you know, we make an Ethernet switch. Oh, you make an Ethernet switch based on the fiber channel? I got to have that. <laughs> That's what he said. I got to have that um, based on that same type of, of platform. So, um, and he's very happy with what he's seeing from, from, that, from this platform. People at the BBC must be stoked. Hmm? People at the BBC must be stoked. I'm not naming any names. <laughs> <laughs> I, worked at the, I did some work there for a while. And, yeah. The other side, you know, I, is the, the hosting guys. Oh, yeah. Web 2.0 hosting guys. Um, people who need to get a lot of content out onto the internet very quickly. In this particular opportunity, um, and this is actually a win um, for us, where we, there was an RFP put out for Top of Rack, replacement of Top of Rack. This particular company, uh, you actually host files, and they have a free service and a premium service, where you can upload a certain amount of files for free and host, have it hosted on their site, and then they have a premium service where you're uploading the files and you're paying a monthly cost, monthly subscription for those files. In the past, they did it all on the Brocade Sand. That was too, too expensive a model to do it, and so they wanted to sw switch to a more cost-effective model leveraging iSCSI technology. And so, what we did is we replaced their top of rack, current top of rack switches that they had with our VDXs to give them the Ethernet fabric. We gave them the ability to do our, use our VLAG technology because traditional lag is usually between two devices. Um, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. We actually allow you to go between um, um, additional devices, more than two, so that you can have additional bandwidth and additional redundancy. And now they can have their low cost or no cost customers store their storage on iSCSI and keep their premium customers on the fiber channel. 
and those two networks don't touch <laughs> each other. And we had to interoperate with their existing infrastructure. So that was a key to it too. We weren't allowed to replace their existing Cisco infrastructure. And um, so we had to show them an easy way to do that. And um, they were pl very pleased. And this is very easy for them to scale as they grow their business. So that's another key here. Make it easy for me to scale. I want to add another switch, more ports. It has to be easy um, as my business grows. Questions around any of this? This is just case it makes sense? Yeah. Okay. So that was my, I didn't have too many slides there. Uh, it was my last slide. If there's anything I want you to take away from this is to remember that fabrics are high performance, reliable interconnects. That's what fabrics are. And our Ethernet, what we're doing with our Ethernet fabric strategy is making Ethernet looks like these high performance interconnects that you traditionally find in fiber channel networks and you also find um, like with in, Infiniband. band. And then the last thing here is that we believe that moving forward as people build out their data centers, um, whether it be their private cloud um, data centers that enterprises are doing or service providers that we're talking to are building out their public cloud infrastructures, they're gonna look towards fabric types of technology. And so, I'm open up for any questions. Um, the only thing I'm a little concerned about, like the VDX is here, and I know it's very early, <laughs> is that the feature rollout happens at a good pace whilst the code stability stays good. I'm about engineering answer that. <laughs> They're concerned about, as the feature rolls out, yeah, the right. code stability. Uh, maybe we can talk a little bit to that. Yeah, um, so we do a couple of things different. On our uh, non VDX product line from a product development process point of view, uh, which is traditionally different from uh, how our networking companies, how the process is done uh, in terms of how uh, we ensure core quality on, on the product. So, this is something we built on the platform inside of the house. The process for stabilizing the product, product uh, is 50% of the time is spent in ensuring core quality. VDX is one of the products uh, we actually put through those processes uh, very rigorously. That's one. Uh, we believe that ensures uh, relatively better code quality when the code gets out the door. Not saying that there will be there won't be any issues from the middle of the planet, but we've seen that work better than uh, the other processes. Number two, uh, uh, we've uh, leveraged a lot of code from tried and proven uh, net items. Way that uh, uh, we actually share code, not necessarily uh, rip and replace and port it over. Yeah. Uh, so that ensures uh, that we use the code in a way that uh, has been tested and has been used in the same form. Yeah. And ensures quality. Sometimes I want, you know, sometimes my experience is that networking vendors rush kit out the door, and if you want to tumble in, you know, if you race out and get the early versions of it, you end up with. Uh, you know, I know that you know everybody wants to get their numbers up and get their things through the door, but rushing bad code and bad hardware out the door is more common than I'd like to think across the industry. Let me let me share some data to yep. maybe answer that question. Yep. So the box there, the eighty seven seventy, um, went out for and these guys are keeping me honest, went out for EFT. Mm -hmm. Um I wanna say maybe six to eight weeks back. Um, and we monitor the reports back across maybe a dozen customers. The defects that came back um, are in double digits. Yep. Um, and I would challenge any other vendor um, to have anything like that. They're on an order of magnitude higher. Yep. And I think that speaks to, I think, the philosophy of okay versus, I'm not saying one's right versus yep. the other, but it, it just depends on what you optimize for. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, in the experience of that as a flagship product, to have that little come back in terms of customer defects. And these are from well-known customers who really meet on the box. I think it's an outstanding uh, statistic. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Anyone else? So, um, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.